Frontline Updates, where we delve deep into military strategies and updates from conflict zones. Today, we're discussing the progress of the ongoing special military operation as of September 7, 2024. I'm your host, Sharifah Muhammad MGT. I'm Colonel A.C. Ogentoy, an infantry officer. Russian military progress. Multiple Russian military groups, north, west, southern, center, east, and Dnepr, reported success in repelling Ukrainian counterattacks and inflicting heavy losses on Ukrainian forces in different regions, including Kharkiv, Donetsk, Luhansk, and Zaporizhia. Ukrainian forces suffered substantial personnel and equipment losses, with casualties exceeding 2,000 servicemen in various engagements. Russian forces reported the destruction of a wide range of Ukrainian military assets, including tanks, armored vehicles, howitzers, multiple launch rocket systems, MLRS, and artillery units. Welcome to Frontline Updates podcast. I'm your host, and today we have a high-ranking military officer joining us to provide an update on the ongoing military operations in Eastern Europe. Please welcome Colonel A.C. Ogentoye, an infantry officer responsible for leading troops in the field. Colonel Ogentoye, thank you for joining us today. Well, that's an intro and thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to provide an update on the ongoing situation. Colonel, let's dive right in. Could you give us an overview of the progress made by the Russian armed forces during the special military operation on September 7, 2024? The armed forces of the Russian Federation have continued their special military operation across multiple fronts. Units of the North Group, West Group, Southern Group, Center Group, East Group, and Dnieper Group are actively engaged in combat with the Ukrainian armed forces. Overall, the operation remains focused on repelling Ukrainian counterattacks, improving our tactical positions, and inflicting significant losses on enemy manpower and equipment. That sounds like a wide range of operations. Can you walk us through the specific areas where Russian forces have been most active, starting with the North Group? The North Group has been active in areas such as Bryansk, Lipsov, and Volchensk. Our forces inflicted significant defeats on Ukrainian formations, including the 57th Motorized Infantry Brigade and the 92nd Assault Brigade in the Kharkiv region. Ukrainian forces in these areas lost approximately 65 servicemen and two 122mm D-30 howitzers. We've maintained control over critical territories and thwarted enemy attempts to regain ground. Interesting. What about the West Group's involvement? It seems like a lot of action took place in the Kharkiv region as well. Correct. The West Group of Forces focused on operations in areas such as Kupiansk, Petropavlovka, and Lozovea in Kharkiv, as well as in the Luhansk People's Republic and Donetsk People's Republic regions. We successfully improved our tactical positions and inflicted severe losses on several Ukrainian brigades, including mechanized and territorial defense units. Notably, eight counterattacks by Ukrainian assault groups were repelled. Ukrainian forces suffered the loss of over 450 servicemen, along with various military hardware, such as tanks and artillery units, including U.S. and British-made systems. It seems like artillery and equipment losses were quite significant for Ukraine. What kind of military hardware was destroyed during these engagements? Yes, the losses were indeed substantial. Among the destroyed equipment were a 155mm self-propelled artillery unit Braveheart, M198 and M777 howitzers from the US, British-made FH-70 howitzers, and numerous other artillery pieces. Additionally, electronic warfare stations such as Enclave and Cordis were neutralized, along with five field ammunition depots. That's quite an array of equipment. Let's move to the Southern Group of Forces. What successes did they report? The Southern Group continued its advances into enemy defenses, particularly around Seversk, Fedorovka, and Krasnogorovka in the Donetsk People's Republic. Ukrainian formations, including mechanized, infantry, and assault brigades, faced severe losses, with over 810 servicemen and several combat armored vehicles destroyed. Additionally, a 203mm self-propelled gun pion, multiple 155mm howitzers, and ammunition depots were eliminated during these operations. That's a considerable number of casualties. What about the center group of forces? 
there were reports that they liberated a key settlement. Can you tell us more? Yes, the center group achieved a significant victory by liberating the settlement of Kalinovo in the Donetsk People's Republic. During the operation, they inflicted damage on Ukrainian brigades in areas like Zerzinsk and Grudavka. We also repelled seven Ukrainian counterattacks by mechanized and airborne brigades, resulting in the loss of 470 Ukrainian servicemen. Additionally, several armored vehicles and artillery pieces, including a French-made Caesar 155mm howitzer, were destroyed. It seems like a coordinated effort across multiple fronts. The East Group also played a role in these operations. How did they contribute? The East Group of Forces focused on engagements in the DPR and Zaporizhia regions. They occupied more advantageous positions and inflicted damage on Ukrainian formations in Vadianoi and Prechestavka. Ukrainian forces in these areas lost around 110 servicemen and several pieces of U.S.-made equipment, including a 155mm M777 howitzer and an N-TPQ-50 counterbattery radar. Thank you, Colonel. And finally, the DNEPR group. What can you tell us about their operations? The Dnieper Group inflicted losses on Ukrainian forces in the Zaporizhia and Kherson regions. Their operations targeted mechanized and mountain assault brigades, resulting in the loss of up to 60 Ukrainian servicemen, seven vehicles, and a 122mm self-propelled artillery unit Gvazdika. They also destroyed a field ammunition depot and an electronic warfare station during these operations. Beyond ground forces, it sounds like Russian air and missile forces were also active. Could you share more about their role in these operations? Yes, operational tactical aviation, unmanned aerial vehicles, missile forces, and artillery played a key role. They struck concentrations of Ukrainian manpower and equipment in over 139 areas. In addition, workshops involved in the production of Ukrainian missiles and drones were hit. Air defense systems also intercepted several threats, including French-made guided bombs, U.S.-made HIMARS rockets, and 30 unmanned aerial vehicles. That's a comprehensive air defense system in action. To wrap things up, Colonel, can you provide an overview of the total losses claimed by Russian forces since the start of the special military operation? Since the beginning of the operation, we've reported the destruction of 642 aircraft, 283 helicopters, over 31,000 unmanned aerial vehicles, and nearly 18,000 tanks and armored combat vehicles. Additionally, over 1,400 multiple launch rocket systems, 14,000 artillery pieces, and 25,000 special military vehicles have been neutralized. Those are staggering numbers, Colonel. Finally, before we close, there's been recent news about an attempted invasion in the Kursk region. Can you provide any updates on that? Yes, Russian forces successfully repelled two attacks by Ukrainian assault groups in the Kursk region near the settlements of Borky and Madvievka. We also thwarted additional attack attempts in the directions of Koronevo and Ruskia Konopelka. The enemy's losses amounted to 20 servicemen and two armored vehicles, with further strikes targeting concentrations of personnel and equipment in the Sumi region. Several sources are reporting that strikes like those in Poltava, during which several hundred Ukrainian soldiers were killed and wounded, will now be carried out regularly. Since several dozen Iskanders have been allocated for this task, it means that there is also an opportunity to increase production of the KH-101. In fact, this means that from now on, no foreign specialist, especially with EU or US citizenship, will be able to feel safe on Ukrainian territory, regardless of how far from the front he is. Colonel, thank you for providing such a detailed briefing on the current military situation. Your insights are invaluable to our understanding of the conflict's dynamics. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Join us next time as we continue to provide up-to-date coverage on global military affairs. Stay with us for more updates and expert analyses on global defense and security issues. Stay informed, stay secure. Thank you. I have appreciated the opportunity to share this information with your audience. According to Gaza's health ministry, at least 61 people have been killed by Israeli attacks on the Gaza Strip in the last two days alone. Additionally, another child, identified as Yakin Alasol from Khan Yunus, has died of malnutrition due to Israel's continued blocking of any aid to the Gaza Strip.